Hey everybody, Steve Ferguson, Thrive Mortgage coming to you today. I wanted to visit with you a little bit about the market and how crazy it's been. And so I wanna explain what the market is doing, what it could potentially do, and why you definitely don't wanna be running right now. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with my handy dandy little dry erase board behind me. I'm gonna draw some pictures for you guys. We're gonna do some Pictionary for sure. So inflation. Right, you guys have all heard this word by now. Inflation just means a couple different things, right? So let's write it down. So I'm gonna get my black marker here. Inflation means that demand is greater than supply. Okay, so when you go to the store, Ignore my handwriting, by the way, I type all day. So just remember this, I hope you can read it. If inflation is high, that means the demand exceeds the supply by a substantial amount. Word just came out yesterday that we're seeing some of the highest inflation we've seen in decades, which means there's still a huge demand and not enough supply. So what's caused the supply issue? Well, it really started back in COVID, right? You guys all remember when the economy shut down completely, everybody couldn't go to work, all those things. And so what you have is you have this artificial stop to all the production out there, right? Plus us as an entire civilization now realize that there's some kind of disease or virus or whatever it may be that can affect us. And so it changes people's mindsets about working. So when you put everybody at home, people still have to buy groceries. Things still have to be shipped. Things still have to be made. The problem is you have nobody there making those things. So it creates immediate inflationary type demands on the supply chain. The problem is, or what should have been done is that we should have modified interest rates early on in this process. And when I say we, I mean, you know, the federal government as an example, should have acted very quickly because they should have expected that this to be the case. Unfortunately, that did not occur for a period of two years. And then when they started to make the change, the interest rates and the, excuse me, the inflation numbers were already so high that uh, they had to make changes very quickly. And that's why we're seeing what's called market compression, which means rates are going up really, really fast. And the economy and the, the actual industry itself doesn't have the ability to catch up with it in a short amount of time. And so that causes rates to climb. That causes people to have to spend discount points to quote unquote, buy down their interest rate because there's no margin in those rates anymore. It creates essentially catastrophic failure. Now, you have to understand historically speaking, interest rates in the healthy range are between about five and a half and 7%. If you looked at the graph today, you would see that normally speaking, that's where the market kind of sits. They do go up above that and occasionally they do go below. We've been very blessed. The rates have been low for a long period of time, but that's the lowest they've ever gone in the history of them keeping track of it. So we're just reverting back to normalcy now. Now, Here's what's important to understand about what the market is going to do. The rates are not high enough to stop inflation. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. Okay, so our rate today, let's just assume that today's rates is 6% rate. Okay, so we're gonna put 6% here, today's rate. At that rate, right now, the inflation number is greater than 8%. Okay, that's a problem. The last time inflation was this high was back in the early 80s. I don't know if you guys remember what the interest rates were in the early 80s, but they were in the teens. So for you guys who love those three and 4% range rates, I love them too, uh, they're gone. And so we just gotta adjust with what the market's doing. This is not a fearful situation. This is just, these are things you need to understand. So if we start this huge 8% and it climbed, right? This went up recently, even at that interest rate, uh, are close to these interest rates, that means we've got to push this mortgage rate way higher in order to prevent the demand from exceeding supply. Okay, now, or prevent inflation. The inflation number has to go down. It's one of the most important numbers in the economy as a whole, and we're going to have to do whatever it takes, unfortunately, to push the inflation down to a healthy number, which is about 4%. Um, so, what does that mean for the market? So the Fed, or what the Fed most likely will do, and again, there's no crystal ball. Let me give my disclaimer, right? 
I'm not an economist. I don't have the crystal ball. I can only give you what I have from my market experience. The Fed should continue to increase interest rates until a point in time, the inflation number goes down to approximately 4%. Do we know where that's gonna be? No, we do not. However, what I can tell you is 6% today is gonna to sound really good here in a few months because it would not surprise me to see interest rates get into the sevens or even hit seven by the end of the year. It depends on what these inflation numbers do. Now there's other factors that are influencing inflation. You've got, you know, fuel costs, you've got the war overseas. There's a lot of different things that, you know, it's kind of the perfect storm for lack of a better description that can impact different mortgage rates and interest rates. But the common consumer, you need to understand what this means. Okay. So we have a perfect storm in the housing industry as it sits right now. Let me explain why. So you have houses, right? That everybody has to live in shelter. That's my house. Just in case you guys were wondering. The price of houses have gone up dramatically over the last 12 months or so. The problem with this is that it, that means it's more expensive to own a home. Plus, it's more expensive to rent a home. So that means no matter what, at this point in time, the cost of shelter is going to cost you a lot more money than it did 12 months ago. So let's just assume for a second that the home prices decrease or not decrease, but just stop increasing, right? Which they become stable. It's very rare for a home price market across a, an individual specific market or a state to go down. It just doesn't work that way. It can essentially collapse the economy because housing is a big part of the economy. You'll see it stabilize. You may see it drop just a little bit, but the old stuff from 2008, there's a lot of things put in place now where none of that's going to happen anymore. And so it's, it would just be very unusual for something like that to happen. So let's just assume that house prices stop increasing for a minute. The issue you have is rates are going to continue to climb. So regardless of the house prices stabilizing, the mortgage payment for that home is going to continue to go up. Here's why this is important. If I'm a buyer right now, I'm a first time home buyer, and I'm trying to decide, should I buy a home or rent? A lot of people are making the unfortunate decision to rent. Let me explain why this is catastrophic, okay? I'm an investor as well. I've owned rental properties for many, many years. Um, and so I'm very familiar with how the rental property market works and what to expect. Here's what's gonna happen, and it's already happening. If I've got a group that is this big, right, that wanna buy homes, that square represents everybody who wants to purchase a home, okay? In a normal market, right? Let's just assume it's split 50-50. So these guys are renters, these guys are buyers. So B is buyer, R is renter. That's about the split, right? 50% are renting, 50% are buying. Usually it's a little more buying. If it's a seller's market, you may not have as many, et cetera, but kind of a healthy split. In this market, less people qualify than in my opinion, in the last, I don't know, 40 or 50 years for a home, because of interest rates going higher and the price and the, the sheer cost of owning a home today. So here's what it's done to the line. This line is gone, right? And so it shifted over to here, okay? That's a major problem, right? So remember how I talked about supply and demand? We have a huge amount of demand for rental properties right now. So what happens when you have a huge demand? There's not enough supply, so rental prices do what? They go up, okay? So what is happening in the market right now in regards to rents is they are growing astronomically at a much faster pace than a mortgage would cost you. Now, people are arguing all the time, but what about taxes and interest rates? And if I'm renting, I don't have to pay any of those things. That is not true. Look, from a landlord perspective, you have to understand that a landlord builds in any tax increases, any interest rate increases, any costs of any fashion are going to be passed on to the renter. So yes, you are paying taxes. Yes, if I've got a higher interest rate on my mortgage and I'm renting it to you, you're going to be paying a higher payment to cover the cost of that mortgage. Investors are not getting hit on this. Renters are getting destroyed on this. Okay. Um, I can tell you Personally, I have seen rent increases of between 30 and 40% year over year on the cost of rent. And that's all because of supply and demand. 
if I had a rental unit come up today that was available, it would rent most likely on the same day. And it's not because we're trying to be difficult or complicated as investors. It's a matter of that supply and demand, and that's just what it is. So what this means is, from a rental standpoint, you're spending way more money as a renter than you would ever spend as a homeowner, even at these rates. Plus, you're not getting the tax benefits. You're not getting the appreciation. You can't paint your rooms any color you want. If you have a dog, good luck. Because from a rental standpoint, most investors don't want animals. No offense. Animals do a lot of de destruction. And so those are all things you have to consider as a renter. The last thing I want to hear from a renter right now, and I feel terrible when they say it, is, hey, you know what? I'm going to wait for a year and see what the market does. Guys, that is not a good idea in my professional opinion. And I'm giving you my disclaimer again. This is all my opinion. Rent is going to do nothing but climb. And by the time you decide, you know what? It's terrible. I don't want to rent anymore. I've already spent $20,000 on shelter for my family I want to buy. Guess what? Rates are going to be higher. Even if the home prices stop today, rates are going to be higher as long as the Fed continues to push the rate in order to stem inflation, right? Now, do we know how much higher they're going to go? Have no idea, All right? We have no idea. We don't know. We don't have a crystal ball that tells us that. But the consensus across the board is that we should expect rates to continue to turn higher until inflation drops, okay? So if you buy a house today, you can lock in your interest rate you can essentially lock in your payment. You get the tax benefits of owning the home plus the appreciation and the ability to do what you want to with the house. You are now in a situation for you and your family where you can predict what your mortgage payment's going to be versus if you rent, once you're in the home, landlords are only gonna sign one year lease agreements with you because they know in a year they're gonna be able to push those rates again and they're gonna have to because taxes are higher and everything else and supply and demand is a, is a real thing. So think about that when you're buying a home or when you're trying to consider what to do with you and your family. Invest in your family, invest in buying a home, choose the right program for you guys and pull that trigger. You can always refinance the home at a later point in time if rates do happen to come down. Um, you can also look at what are called lock and shop loans. If you wanna protect your interest rate right now and don't let it rise anymore, but you haven't found that perfect house, guess what? You can lock it in while you shop. Our company allows you to lock it in for up to six months while you're shopping for a home. At least then you know your rate's not gonna change anymore. So there's programs out there designed to help you to protect you and to get you where you wanna go. Now guys, there's a lot more I could have talked about this. I know these are really ugly pictures behind me and I'm so sorry, I'm not a very good drawer. You can tell anybody on my team for Pictionary is gonna lose. But I need you to understand these numbers are all going up, pushes everything over to on the rental side, that rental picture is getting a lot bigger and the buy side is getting smaller. And it's not because people aren't able to buy, it's because they're scared to buy and they're making decisions based on things that they think may happen when in reality, all the numbers are pointing the opposite direction. So hope this helps you guys. Please let your friends know this information. Please reach out to me. Let's run some numbers for you guys and compare it a home payment to what rent may be and help you make an educated decision. Thanks again. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.